uh, since it's your uh, it's your first interview with us, um, well, uh, you you got an album up to be released. Uh, well, we c we can't uh, um, we can't uh, we cannot not talk about that first major label uh, label release. deal. Uh, so tell me if I, huh? So that's a double negative. No, because I mean, just, I, I ask it so many times. I mean, to so many bands that have been on independent labels before and then on major labels before that it sounds. Uh, I'm always wondering if it's redundant in uh, in, in some point. But anyway, I mean, uh, what what did like the B-52s? I love them. Do you like Blondie? Do you like yeah. Devo? Yeah, yeah. Do you like the Cars? I love them. Well, okay. Do you like the Plastic Ono Band live in Toronto? That was okay. I didn't hear the live album though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how we got on the subject of the B-52s. Oh yeah. Oh, all yeah. those bands are on major labels too. Yeah, that's it. And the Ramones, and the Clash, and the Six Pistols. The Six Pistols. Not to say we're half as good as any of those bands, but pretty much... No way can we touch a plastic ono. There's our answer for, mm. for the major Not label question. Foot. Does it change anything? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it gives you more freedom because you have more money to, you know, Burn. waste. waste yeah. <laughs> I, bought a, I bought a kick drum pedal today, which I never would have been able to do. If, if well, what, what do you say about bands like Mud Honey? That come from Seattle, but don't, that don't want to be on a major label. Oh, that's well, fine. That's, that's, that's their prerogative, you know. Each their own. Yeah. Be a better place if we all subscribe to that philosophy, huh? Yeah, it would be. Did Did it change anything from uh, from Bleach doing uh, that uh, that album? Did uh, Did was there a big change? Yeah, there was a change the way we went about it. It was a big well, was Hollywood two years, right? two years between records. Well, change you mean the way we recorded it or the way our material? The material. Oh yeah. It's, Two years yeah, band, two years. you know, Bleach was recorded in December of 1988, mm -hmm. and now it is pushing December 1991. So now we even have Nevermind behind us, and we're blazing new, exciting frontiers. Does it change any? <laughs> How do you say that? Sakajawea. She was um, Lewis and Clark's guide when they, you know, there were two explorers She's and they. A trailblazer. They trailblazed, and they went all the way and discovered the West and opened up the West. Sacagawea was their Indian guide. Okay. Yeah, Sacagawea. So, so what about him? Well, we were blazing new frontiers, and they were blazing new frontiers. We're the Lewis and Clark and the Sacagawea of modern-day rock and roll. We were going to name the album Sacagawea, but... but we, uh, do we know how to spell it? But we, our distribution company, wouldn't go for it. Yeah. Why, why, did you entitle it why did you entitle the, uh, the album Nevermind? I don't know. So I could brush off the question. Forget yeah. it. Never, Doesn't, never matter. Mind. Never mind. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Any 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 specific things you wanted to talk about on that album? I listened to it just a couple of times since I had it a couple of days ago. Uh, I saw the video uh, that uh, smells of Teen Spirit. Uh, smells like Teen Spirit. Like teen spirit. Uh, were there uh, were there things that were more obvious in that album? than others where they're not not statements i hate talking about statements but uh especially that first <laughs> sorry that first song that first statement that that, that first video what <laughs> statement <laughs> is like yeah <laughs> every month i get a bank statement and i'm usually so overdrawn and uh so we're not into making i don't know there's there's can be statements can be made anyway anywhere you know there's a lot to be said for subtleties mm -hmm. you know what i mean so, There's a lot to be said for being cryptic also. Yeah. Cryptic? Yeah, mysterious. So you can just like... Because we just can't explain ourselves. We don't, we don't consciously think about our music, so we can't explain it. Therefore, interviews are worthless. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what do you think about interviews? <laughs> it's a pretty what good do I think? It's really Did you hear big. my reaction when he asked me if I wanted to do one? Yeah. I said, no. no. I said, we heck were, no. We were an interview magazine right next to Shonen Knife. And you know who was on the co cover? Matt Dillon. Yeah, well, I, that, that's funny because, I mean, uh, Cameron Crowe's doing a... Dillon. No, but I mean, that's, it's funny you talk about... Uh, <laughs> Cameron Crowe's doing a, a movie with Matt Dillon right, in Seattle. Yes. And uh, there are many musicians, uh, mu Se uh, mu Seattle musicians in, uh, in, in that movie. Are you, are you part of it at all? No, no part whatsoever. <laughs> we opted not to uh, delve in the, in the uh, I saw movie Cotton industry. Candy. Directed by Ron Howard, it was about this rock and roll band, and what what was the evil rock and roll band name? Uh, I don't know. Was that the one with Leif Garrett in it? Oh, that's Leif Garrett. One. Leif Garrett. I've seen all these rock and roll movies, and it's always 
you know, the star. There's either Leaf Garrett in it or... There's never been a really good documentary on rock and roll Except bands. Except for Spinal Tap was the only for rock Spinal Tap. movie worth watching. Oh, and Don't Look Back by Bob Dylan. That's true. Have you seen that? No. Very, very good. Oh, it's a good movie. It's old, made very in 1964. Good. Makes a fool out of Donovan. It's a rockumentary. So, I mean, uh, you, did, were, were, you, were you approached? Were you asked to, uh, no. to be part of that movie at all? No. anything. You know what I mean? Oh, no, they did ask us. Really? Yeah, they asked John. Oh, I said no. I, I said no before even asking you guys. Oh. That's because I'm the leader of the band. You blew my, you blew my chance, man. <laughs> I'm going to roll into Hollywood. I'm going to have a star on Hollywood Boulevard. And I'm going to have a big house with a swimming pool and all these cars. And I'm going to get divorces and stuff. And I'm going to have a big drug. Jethro on TV's uh, right. <laughs> Beverly Hillbillies. Tell, well, tell me about that. Uh, that that been no that that Seattle that Seattle thing everybody's been talking about. I mean, there's been that Manchester scene. There's that Seattle oh. scene now. I mean, is it any is it is it relevant at all? Um, all scenes are relevant, but they all eventually phase into nothing, or you know, they they go go away after or a while. They eventually you know? become a parody of themselves. Or, yeah, I mean, they eventually become people, a parody of themselves. People put too much emphasis on scenes. I mean, just because there happens to be a, a town with a few really good bands in it, I mean, big deal. It, it's happened all over the place in Minneapolis and L.A. and New York, all over the place. So it's, it's really no big deal. I don't understand this like community patriotism that everyone is is boasting about in Seattle because like they're claiming that they finally put Seattle on the map. You know, but like. What map? Now the Who rents cares? are going up. Yeah, everyone's moving to Seattle. I mean, we had Jimi Hendrix. Heck, what more do we want? We went to his grave once, and there was a guitar picks and beer bottles all over it. And we went to Bruce Lee's grave at like 1.30 in the morning. It's really wild. It was like in the Chinese part of the cemetery. There were sticks and nunchucks laying all over the place. <laughs> there was these, we thought for sure there was these ninjas creeping behind these uh, tombstones were like whoa but then again the state of mind we were in at the time would be like <laughs> but it was <laughs> <into> turtles <laughs> but do you feel that that since everybody's been talking about Seattle Seal did, 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 did it did you feel that uh, that it helped you in any ways getting that that recording contract or it has nothing to do with it, it? Might, yeah it, mm -hmm. it might have yeah I suppose it did we, yeah. we were in on we're grateful hole. for it I guess I mean, we, we were never seeking out a major label contract in the first place. It just happened. I don't know if it would have happened if we weren't on Sub Pop or not, but um, I don't know. It's just we got a lot of press in, in Europe because of the Sub Pop scene. And it wasn't necessarily because John and Bruce were these mastermind guys, you know, getting a lot of interviews, like using their talents to get interviews. I mean, they were in, in ways, but also the, a lot of the journalists over in Europe happened to like the band, sincerely like them, so they wrote about them, you know. It, it wasn't as much of a hype as everyone thinks it was. But, uh, I mean, s since, the, since, uh, since the album is going to be released uh, in, uh, in a few weeks, uh, are you doing that tour? Uh, I mean, are some parts of, uh, of, of that tour uh, being done without th those people not knowing about the album? Are you planning to go, yeah. to go back in those cities? Or, I mean, does, did, did, didn't you feel that it would have been a good thing to wait until uh, until the album was released? Yeah, it took about a week or two too early. So what can you? You've been complaining about that? Yeah. But I mean, what's I mean? How many day? How many gigs have you got on that tour? I don't know. I haven't even looked at the iTunes. Well, the album comes out on the 23rd. The album comes out next Tuesday. Today is the 20th. Yeah. I think we'll just be following oh, it. You know, kids will be buying it the day, practically oh, right. the day so that we play in every city, you know, just barely being from becoming familiar with it. So it would have been more wise to wait a little while. But. Do you feel that radios may may help you? Do you feel that the, the, the music might uh, fit that mainstream thing everybody's talking about? I think well, that people sort of get sucked into the, to the single that we have out now with the melody of the song and they don't realize it's so heavy because they're singing along to the song or whatever but if you listen to it in the succession of songs it's a lot heavier than most of the stuff that's on the radio there's so. other, other bands like breaking into the like commercial radio and stuff you know so we're not just kind of following in you know if the new wave gets thrown into the mainstream they try it again 
Tell me about uh, tell me about uh, that Teen Spirit song uh, since it's the first video, first single. I I just watched the video. We received it yesterday. Uh, I loved it. But uh, tell me if that did you have anything to do in uh, elaborating it, doing it? Oh, yeah, we thought of the whole idea. It's just uh, our idea was to have a um, a pep assembly scene that's gone bad. You know, that's gone bad. Anything you've experienced before? No, it was just more or less like a fantasy of ours to for that to happen in high school while we're sitting at a pep assembly board off our skulls, you know. So after a while we resorted to um, skipping the pep assemblies, not going to them at all. But I don't know, it's just an idea. We the, use, the, use the youth, the youth theme, you know. I mean, how do you feel about how do you feel about youth uh, since since you talk about it in the in in the song? Well, Sonic Youth's a great band. <laughs> but w what about Teen Spirits? Well, I hate seeing all these just normal-looking teenagers. They dress like their parents, you know, and they have the same values. So it's like it's kind yeah, of a shame. Our, our parents are in control of the entertainment industry, and there's no generation gap anymore because the kids and the parents like the same music, and it's really it's really frightening to us. So uh, maybe that's. Maybe that's what we tried to incorporate into the video. Yeah. How do you feel that the parents of uh, the kids listening to your music will react? <laughs> well, we haven't we ha <laughs> we haven't um, done any good, have we? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I don't think we've done a damn dent in the in the generation gap at all. I'm really ashamed of that. Yeah, yeah. All we can do is hang our heads in shame. Really? Shame on you, Shane. <laughs> not... Are you serious? Shane. Shane. Oh, that's a good movie. That's Batman. Batman. Oh, no, 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 that was a, that was a western movie. Yeah, but the idea was. A... We're avoiding the question. What were you saying? I don't but know. That movie uh, was called Shame. We're talking about st about Teen Spirits, but uh, no, I think I got uh, I got material on that. Okay, well, uh, anyway, I mean, what about uh, what about that show tonight? Uh, is it is it different from one night to another? Or is it? I mean, is is it something you like being on tour, or would you just like? To, to stick by the the recording stu studios and do do some more songs. Touring, touring is wonderful. Yeah, see. get to eat on the road. You get to sit in a van Play. like this and, and like be jostled for like eight hours a day. You get free alcohol every night. Mm -hmm. well, who can ask for more? It's a party every night. You go to cauliflower like the last couple nights. Yeah, or like some sort of chive dip. It's been right on. Keep you, see, you got to keep solid if you're crogging down those beers, you know. So it's good to eat a lot of veggies and cheese and stuff. Because I think my insides start to swell after a while, you know. And it's just like not a very pleasant experience. Well, it's pleasant when I'm drunk, but like. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.